Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Wakakodash. Want to send up honors to our elders and apostles, that great millstone that rule well. Peace, love, and salutation as always to the hope of the lake. Doing this work throughout the four corners of the earth in sincerity and in truth. So I'm coming back once again with um, another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Wakakodash, which is the Holy Spirit that enables us to teach this truth and to do this work. And this is going to be impromptu, you know, um, just making my way into the plantation. I actually just pulled up to the plantation, you know, and just uh, meditating upon, you know, the different um, the different forms of oppression that we receive, you know, as Israelites, you know, as Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You know, everything that we receive, of course, is, um, is self-inflicted, man. When you go into the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, you know, there was a a clear-cut distinction on what would happen to us if we follow Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and if we didn't, you know, and as a stiff-necked nation, we didn't follow the commandments of the Heavenly Father. And now now look at us to this day and age, man. We're under those same curses that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai said will come upon us if we didn't obey his voice, all right? Now, on the flip side, you know, you have two-thirds of our people you know, that are, um, and rightfully so, they're roused, they're roused up behind the situation with the Jake that got killed up there in Minneapolis or murdered, more like, by the um, by Esau Edom, right? But this, the scriptures and history have been telling us, you know, the nature of the so-called white man, Esau Edom. It's been telling us, telling us this, man. You know, even though he walks about uh, speaking smooth words as it says in Psalms, yet where they draw swords. You know, because Esau, Edom could talk a good talk, man. You know, he could talk a good talk. He can walk a good walk. But we know the intent of his heart, you know, by way of the scriptures. It tells us that the congregation will never be changed. You know, that wick wickedness have exceedingly um, blind blinded them, okay? They go not to sleep unless they cause them to fall. You know, uh, was it Ezekiel 25 and 12? They, they had vengeance against uh, Ju uh, Jerusalem and Judah, you know? So these things are you, you put plain, to, plain to the point. You should get tired. You should be tired of Babylon, man. If you're an Israelite, you should truly be tired, man. And you don't have to be, you know, um, though it would be a beautiful thing for all of our people to come back to the Heavenly Father, and to worship Yahweh Bashim uh his, his name in truth and sincerity, everybody doesn't have to be under the banner of the um, of Great Millstone. You know, everybody doesn't have to be a um, as they call now a Bible thumper. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be heavy into the the scriptures to understand that this ain't the place, man. This is not it. You know, the Spirit speak expressly. And, you, and as an Israelite, nothing in this place resonate with our spirit, man. You know, the things that we do, the wicked, the wickedness that we um, we see on the daily, the iniquity that's prescribed on the daily, all these things come from Esau, Edom. You know, and our people, as well as as well as um, as a, what we used to do when we were in the world, we used to follow these same customs. All right. <laughs> This is Jeremiah 2 and verse 14. It says, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? And, and the reason why he's spoiled, first and foremost, like as I mentioned, the, uh, the chapter uh, 28 in Deuteronomy, we're under those curses. Okay, so the Most High, uh, also when you go into Jeremiah 3 and 8, it says the Most High gave us the bill of divorce because we committed adultery. Okay. We committed adultery against the home, uh, Heavenly Father. So guess what? He he took that hedge of protection from around us. And now to this day and age, we're spoiled. We're, we're, um, we're downplayed as a nation. You know, we are the most ridiculed nation upon the face of the earth. All right? And, and, and rightfully so. All right? Because it says that in the book of Proverbs, it says um, pretty much all those that um, love sin love death. All right, and all those that love me will keep my commandments, roughly paraphrasing. You know, and, and our people, we don't keep the commandments as a whole, as a nation, you know? 
You know, matter of fact, since I mentioned this scripture, I want, I want to get it because it takes for it takes for a major situation um, from Esau Edom that he he does against Jake for the rest of the people to rise up. You know, which you should rise up anyway, man. You should rise up anyway. You can you can you can turn on the news and you can see the wickedness that these these Edomites prescribe every day, man. Right before your face, you know, the uh, the, the uh, making all fifty states um, legal for homosexual uh, homosexual marriages. You know, they um they're doing these these all these vaccines, which the scriptures tell you you're not supposed to cut into the flesh. Okay, they're putting these man-made viruses out here, and they're acting like this is something that naturally came about. You know, it's, it's Esau Edom has a long list of wickedness, man. Okay, so I want to get this in Ezekiel twenty-five and verse twelve. It says, "Thus said the Lord Yahweh, because that Edom had dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and had greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus said the Lord Yahweh, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom." You know, and, and how did they deal against the house of Judah? Just look at the history, man. You know, the mass lynchings, you know, and, and, and making making postcards out of lynchings. You know, and there were certain uh, captivities where you had Israel, uh, Israelites that would escape. And then you had another sect of, of heathens, main, namely um, the Edomites, that would catch us in the way and, and would take us back to where we uh, ran away from. And it tells you that in the book of Obadiah. Okay? How they would catch us in the way and they would take, you know, pretty much take us back, man. Alright? What else they did? They uh, Esau has done all types of heinous acts towards Israel, man. You know? Man, mainly it's because he sold his birthright. And he wants his birthright back, man. Through the spirit, Esau, Edom knows that he's through, man. So he's doing everything in his power and has been doing everything in his power to get back at us, man. You know, <laughs> the the very first account of murder was by who? Esau Edom. Okay. What did, what did it say in um once his father once um uh, uh once Isaac died, man? You know, what did he say? He said, Well, I'm gonna revenge myself upon my brother. You know, and, and, and surely enough, he's doing that into this day and age, man. You know, and it says, therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it and will make it desolate from teeming and there the dance shall uh, fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. OK, so this is going to be a physical thing that's going to happen. Whenever Yahweh Bashim um deems it deems it time to do so, all right. In this day and age, it's not time to do so, man. You know, though we do see see the things that he's doing, see the things that Esau Edom's doing. You know, <clears throat> we don't agree with it. You know, and that that's one thing that um, a lot of the people, a lot of our people, don't understand about us that actually go and teach this word. Is that no? We're not, we're not siding with Esau Edom just because we're not taking immediate action, physical action, doesn't mean that we don't look at this and we're not vexed. You know, we're definitely vexed by these things that happen, man, because this is our people. You know, we we are we have that spirit of Ezra's, where we care about our people so much, man. You know, there's a, you know if you if you're familiar with the account, you know there's an angel that had to come and correct Ezra's and said, "Love is thou the people of the Most High more than he." You know, so we definitely love our people, man. You know, our people are jacked up. Everything, everything the Most High does is justified. So that death that that man um, dealt with was definitely uh, through the through Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. But the manner, you know, uh, the the manner of how they how they killed them, man, it shows the hatred. You know, it shows the extreme hatred. And I um, I seen a, a picture of the same guy that. That uh that killed the Jake up there in Minneapolis had a hat on, a red hat that said uh make it said make whites great again. Okay, not make America great again, make whites great again. Alright? And this is this is the this is the 
the nature of Esau and Edom. You know, nothing's, he's always been this way. You know, this is not some new thing. It's just that they're, they're truly showing their hatred, man. You know? And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do an Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, said the Lord Yahweh. All right? So we're waiting on our kingdom to get here, man. All right? As it says in the book of Second Ezra, the eighth chapter, it says that rest is allowed. Plenteousness is made ready. Okay? What it's saying is our kingdom is prepared, man. You know, the things that are going to bring us peace are prepared. Because right now we're not living in a time of peace. Okay? We're not living in a time of our rest, and I'm going to get it. This is Micah 2 and 10. And as it says in uh, Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, or the third chapter, Salakia, it tells you that there's a time and purpose to everything uh, everything under the heaven, man. All right? And right now, we're in the time of our hell. We're under, we're under curses, man. This is no time to be rejoicing and being joyful and, 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 and carrying on with different acts of righteousness, man. You know? Or, or, or um... <laughs> You know, as, as the elder brother here in Nebraska says, decorating your hell. You know, you got these chains of bondage around your neck. And what you're doing is what they call in the world, busting it down. You know, you're decking it out. Okay. You're making it, <laughs> you're making slavery fun, you know, which bondage is never fun, man. You know, but that bondage, that same bondage that we're under the same hell that we have to deal with as Israelites Guess what? It's going to turn to Esau Edom. You know, as it says in, uh, I believe, in the same book of Malachi. I mean, uh, not Malachi, Micah. All right? Uh, but I'm going, I'm going to get this first. This is Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with the sore destruction, man. And that's, and that's talking about, first it's talking about, when it says it will destroy you, it's talking about these different philosophies and doctrines and gods. That are created in this place that people follow, man. These things are destroying our people on the daily. All right? Our people are chasing after money. They're chasing after women. They're chasing after everything under the sun, man. You know, and all these things are idols, man. If Because they give more reverence to it than they give to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right? Uh, turn back your captivity, you know. Captivity. All right, because that's what I want to get. A Zephaniah, Salakia. So Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, at that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I uh, gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all the people in the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes. And actually, I want to go up to verse 19. All right. It says, uh, verse 19, it says, <clears throat> it says, behold, at that time. Will I undo all that afflict thee? You know, and who's the main one afflicting us, man? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. The number one enemy of Israel. The number one enemy of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, man. You know? It says, and, but the, uh, there are also other nations that afflict us because, it, be, because of Esau, Edom, man. You know, you have these different nations. They follow in suit. They see that we're in a vulnerable spot. And they're following suit of Esau, Edom, man. Okay? All these different nations that had us in slavery and that, that beat us down, you know, though we um, rightfully deserve these, uh, deserve these things that we received, there's going to be a judgment for it too, man. You know, no thing goes unpunished. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is, um, is suffering these heathen nations to do the things that they're doing so that, uh, so that they may be judged, man. All right. It says, and I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where I have put them to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, save the Lord Yahweh. So this is what we're waiting on, man. This is saying what? Get, get Put off the mortal thoughts, man. Put off that weak nature. You know, that weak nature consists of everything in Babylon, man, because these things in Babylon make you weak. Christianity makes you weak. All right. Chasing after pussy makes you weak. Being being a, a family man over praising the heavenly father makes you weak, man. You know, put off that weak nature 
and put on the spirit of Yahweh Shem Shai. We're living in a time of prophecy, and this this RFID chip is pretty much pretty much here, man. You know, this is a major prophecy leading unto uh, other major prophecies, which is going to lead to our kingdom. Okay, as it says in Romans, this is high time to wake out of sleep, man. Let's get the hell out of here. All right. So with that being said, Lord willing, this was edifying and uplifting. You know, and uh, hey, may brothers get you know get their mind get their mind right. You know, uh, constantly endure, constantly examine yourselves that you be in the faith. You know, and uh, hey, man, let's get the hell out of here. You know, I brought this out. We're a part of that number, that one one hundred forty-four thousand. All right, shalom.